In less than 48 hours, Governor Babagana Zulum of, Zamf of Baronu State survives another ambush after Friday's near-death encounter with Boko Haram. And 36 states drag federal government to the Supreme Court over Executive Order 10. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayodi Ladendi. Welcome back. This is Plus Politics and it's time for us to get down to the real business. What you might describe as worrisome development, Governor Baba Ganad Zulum, in the last 48 hours has been the target of Boko Haram assassination as he escaped another ambush from the insurgents in Monguno town. To discuss various implications to this threat to life of the chief executive officer of the state, our two security experts, Dr. Kabil Adamu. Good evening. Good evening. And we also have uh, Mr. Tony Ofoyeto, who is also joining us here in Lagos. Good evening, Mr. Ofoyeto. Good evening. How are you today, my brother? I'm fine. I'm doing great. Okay, let me start Thank with... Uh, okay, but maybe by the law of first mention, let me start with uh, Mr. Adamu. Uh, uh, it, it, I don't know how best to put it. Just yesterday, you spoke with us on this channel where you expressed so many worrisome dimensions to this. And incidentally, we also have Mr. Foyeto, who also gave us an update some hours ago on our news bulletin. But my worry is, is there more to what we do not understand? Because this is not looking like um, a coincidence. It's looking more like a script. Can you help us make sense of this whole situation? Well, um, let me start from the obvious, what are the facts, and then we can, from the facts, draw some conclusion. So what are the facts? The facts that there are locations within Borno State and the Lake Chad Basin area where we have at least three known um, terrorist groups active uh, one of the locations is the Lake Chad Basin area. Uh, several islands in the Lake Chad Basin area is dominated by this terrorist group. And the particular terrorist group in that location is the Islamic State in West Africa province. Now, if you move further um, between in the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, there is the Mandara Mountains. And there, too, we have another terrorist group. Uh, also in the Sambisa Forest, there is also another terrorist group. So these are facts. Now, the second fact is the, is the uh, continuous attacks against rural populations and um, security formations in several parts of Borno. If you divide Borno into three, northern, central, and southern Borno, I can in all confidence say there are frequent attacks in parts of northern Borno as well as central Borno. Another fact, um, third fact, attacks between locations. So if you are within a city, let's use Monguno as an example. If you are within Monguno, then you are likely to be a bit safe. But as soon as you travel a few kilometers, five kilometers outside Monguno, maybe back to Meduguri or further you know, into northern Borno, then the frequency of attacks, what we call illegal checkpoints, continue to occur almost on a daily basis. So all of these are facts. Now, with specific reference to the attack on the governor, of Borno State. He was going to Baga, which is a community in Kukawa local government on the fringes of Lake Chat um, Basin. We remember earlier on I mentioned that there is a base of the Islamic State in West Africa province in the islands in the Lake Chad Basin. So we know that continuously they've been attacking locations around um, the Lake Chad Basin, including Baga. And that means the settlement in Baga had been um, displaced. Uh, they, they've been living in different communities within Borno State. Now, the governor made it um, one of his policies to move people back to their locations. And so that is this new vigor around Baga. Um, we can speak around the strategic nature of, of Baga. Uh, whoever controls Baga controls a lot of things. One of it is the economy. There is a lot of um, a thriving fishing industry. And we okay. know from you know, previous research that both the terrorist groups and the military to an extent is benefiting from this thriving fishing industry. Mm. So the governor, apart from wanting to have his people back, 
He wants the economy to thrive. Of course, if the economy thrives, it means there is less emphasis on some of the socioeconomic challenges okay. that are driving the insurgency in the state. Now, it is all of this background that led to develop the development that we're seeing okay. o- over the last couple of days. Um, perhaps in the course of the discussion, Beautiful. we can talk about the security arrangement um, okay. or lack awesome. of it that led awesome. to the attacks. But in a nutshell, these are the facts. And then these are some of the projections on why the attack occurred. Okay. And I must say that's a very good foundation for us to continue the conversation. Let me go to Mr. Tonio Foyeta. Um, okay, for the benefit of those who probably didn't watch the bulletin where you analyze this issue, uh, you seem to suggest that um, this target is well calculated. It's not just uh, the normal incessant uh, attacks that we experience. Can you throw more light on that? I, I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm, I'm actually struggling to, to get you. Okay, uh, but if I can get what you are trying to say, I think invariably you were asking about the attack on the governor. I hope I'm right. Very well, and, sir. Um, whether it was um, a strategically planned or not, I hope I'm right. Very correct. Okay. Um, well, of course, like I said earlier, um, the. Um, Attack on the governor, if you even, if you follow the story very well, you will even discover that even line mine bombs were even planted. So it was not, um, it was not like a spontaneous attack. It was a well-planned and well-orchestrated attack. Um, to the extent that you talk about loss of life, look at it for within 24 hours to attack on the same person. That tells you that it was not a spontaneous or an impulse attack. Now, the implication of that is, first of all, to the extent that uh, you look at the, if you look at it from inward to outward, from the known to the unknown, from the most probable to the very remote. And so I, I think that uh, the security agencies, they know what to do. In, in, in most cases, I think my major problem is always that, um, um, the security agencies are very quick and easy to jump into conclusion. Now, I'll give you an example. The Boko Haram said had not admitted that they were the people that actually attacked the governor. But because we understood their signature, we took it for granted and assumed that most likely they were the set that attacked the governor. But in investigative too, we know very well that when you spread down all variables, as a politician, it is so possible that that comes in from political angle. For the fact that the governor, at, at one time or the other, accused the military, it is possible that it comes from the military. For the fact also that there are business concerns in Baga, for example, it means that it is also possible from that area. Now, look at also the various uh, sects within that area. It also means that it is also possible. So, but having said that, we all narrow this down to Boko Haram, and there is no contention about that for now. Uh, we leave the rest for DSS and the investigation or the intelligence agencies to actually determine who actually did. But my own concern as a security professional is that uh, this is a situation where it is one too many of the case for the same governor. Now, they have the resources to be able to use drones. The area surveillance. Remember, I mentioned I talked about area surveillance. Yes. It's so big, big, big. If you look at what uh, Dr. Adamo analyzed now, uh, analyzing Bono and di- dividing Bono into three major areas: the north, the central, the north central, uh, the, uh, the north, the central, and the, the west. Now, all these combined together, they are much the land mass. Bono is more than the south east of Nigeria, in landmass as a whole, the South East as a whole, the landmass is not up to that of Bono. So you discover that it will be very difficult for security agencies to use just land operation alone. And their best bet is just basically the area of the land. And having the, uh, uh, the military uh, back up on the land, having been able to do a successful operation in the air, and I think that these are areas that the government should begin to look at okay. if they are serious about security. Okay. Don't forget that Bono State is a, is a state that has international boundaries. Any other state? You are talking of a state that, is, is, that has boundaries with the... Another country. 
Yes, another country. So it means that the government must be able to understand why it needs to look at technological applications okay. to security in uh, that area. Mr. As Tony, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the solution. Security. Let's let's hold the breath now. We'll come back to the solution. I like the fact that uh, we've built a very good foundation, and I hope that um, we will land well. Back to you, uh, Kabil. He has raised something very, very serious and there's things you want to go into possible uh, 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 call it postulation now uh, we're looking at we've had governors we've had even gov former governor in that state being accused of even very close to Boko Haram but this time around we have very strange in less than a month we've had three dangerous attacks could, uh, he mentioned the possibility of this could even come from the military. We're talking about four soldiers killed. We're talking about 10 policemen killed. Could this just be normal collateral damage? Can you tell us more? Um, without um, going into you know, all the conspiracy theories that are flying around, um, what I've been able to deduce from the attack, uh, you know, simple, I would say, lack of um, strategy. And I'll explain what I mean by, by this. Um, I, I laid the foundation by uh, agreeing or confirming the fact that the risk level in Baga is high. That means the vulnerability of an attack is extremely high. And the fact that the governor's convoy was attacked um, twice in a space of about three days speaks clearly to that. Um, now, the other thing that became obvious is the convoy ar arrangement. Um, we know for, for, from the two attacks, the last, the one three days ago and then the one a day ago, um, that in both instances, in the first one, it was a complex attack. They laid um, IEDs, planted them on the road, and then when uh, the soldiers shot, the escort team shot at the, the location, the, the bomb went off, and then, of course, they opened fire immediately. So a very complex attack. Um, the second thing that we know from the, the attacks yesterday is that they used donkeys. Um, so imagine a convoy traveling, then they push donkeys, and then, of course, the, the convoy will have to stop because they can't roll over the, the, the donkeys. Now, the question is this. It means these guys had enough time to plan their attack, and unfortunately, if there was an advanced team, or like um, Tony mentioned, aerial surveillance, that aerial surveillance capability was zero. So the question as a security practitioner, why should a governor risk his life? Um, if the military security component of op Operation Lafayette Dole would, for some reasons, allow this, what I just described to happen, how about his own personal security? If I'm heading the security team of that governor, one of the things I would you know, determine before I send him out is that he's safe. I would have to make sure the risk level is low for him to, to visit there. So clearly, where, whatever that security team is doing, they did not take some of these things into consideration. Let's remember that the governor is a high value target. Um, the cardinal objective of the Islamic State in West Africa province is to establish a Sharia Caliphate. How best to do that than to do away with the you know, government structure in, in place? Uh, for as an example, if God forbid they are able to get the governor, and then God forbid they even go higher, that means they are they are okay. nearer achieving. Kabir, their aim. let me stay with so you. Let me stay with high you value bit. target. Let me but stay with you. But unfortunately, the uh, security arrangement for the high value target. Kabir, is not I want place. to draw an example. So to answer your question directly, okay. I do not think um, it's a conspiracy theory that perhaps the military is behind it. Um, the same reason why we're seeing attacks in different parts of Borno, it's, it's a matter of competence. Failure of intelligence, um, you okay. know, deployment uh, lapses, Come and several here. other things. I, uh, for now, and let's remember that the Islamic State in West Africa province has actually claimed the attack in their magazines that they released two okay. days ago. Um, so we know that it is by the Islamic State in West Africa okay, province, good. and we know that the objective is to do away with okay. the political um, structure in, okay. in the state. Uh, now I, the question I, 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 is, I allow Tony to structure? react to that. But before I go back to Tony Kabil, let me just quickly stay with you. Another issue that is mentioned is, um, is the governor also becoming a high risk? We are talking about 30 people that were killed on Friday, and we're talking about them coming back. We have a lot of my colleagues who were in the press crew where their tire was shot, 
And uh, if not for the smartness of the driver, maybe the, the, the casualties would have been more. What do you think you should be telling the governor if you were to advise him, probably in the next 60 seconds, before I go back to Tony? Um, number one is that the, the governor is the nightmare of every executive security protection team. Uh, he's a very resilient person. He does what he wants. And so you don't want you know, to have that kind of principle as an executive team. But I have to also tell him uh, directly, and I hope he's hearing us, that his life is more precious to the people of Borno than this kind of um, bra brave, braveness that he's showing. So he should listen to his security um, you know, team. Whenever they say, for instance, don't go, he should know that they mean well for him. Um, when he was a commissioner, he was doing this type of thing. Now he should allow his commissioners to do, to do it. And then re occasionally, he should be in the front, but okay. allow the commissioners now to handle the things that he was handling when he was a commissioner. It's okay. not in his place as a governor to handle some of these things. It I think your point is... Your point is very clear on that. Uh, Tony, two questions in one now. Let me go back to Tony. Two questions in one. Number one, um, what you have to say about uh, what Kabiru did say, that it, I think we should be able to stand on the fact that ISWAP has claimed responsibility. Then secondly, talking about the risk involved in the governor, because I, I listened to you earlier on where you mentioned the fact that he is a progressive, he is doing what he believes is convinced in. But what about the people that have been wasted? Pardon my language. Well, um, good enough that uh, issue of has claimed responsibility. It, um, it helps the intelligence agencies to know what to do. Um, like I said earlier, the issue of the vulnerability level of the governor uh, from our own little assessment is to the extent that uh, his activity seems to be contradictory to the expectation of the average terrorist, a uh, member of the Boko Haram and Israel threat within that community. Don't forget that this is a governor that is interested in education. This is a governor that is uh, down to earth. This is a governor that is more in, among the people than even in the office. And uh, so if you look at that strategy, is such that uh, uh, it, it's more of wooing the people. And the tests are looking at a situation where uh, they would also capitalize on the illiteracy, they would capitalize on the poverty of the people to be able to recruit more people. But you are talking of a government that is as much as possible trying to bridge that gap. They are trying to bring in the issue of education. Not too well that uh, once these people are educated, they like education, many of them will be liberated from bigotry. Many of them will have a different perspective and different orientation about terrorism. And that is why the threat will not be interested in seeing somebody that is coming up with policies that will help the psyche and the intellectual capacity of the average citizen in Bono. And this is what the governor is doing. But the governor is able to see from the angle that, look, it is not only military approach that can solve this problem. So he's able to look at the social, political, economic perspective to it. And he's not just saying it, he's doing a lot within that community. And I think that for me, that is also what makes the governor to be much more vulnerable now. Yes, previous governor was attacked, and uh, but it is not at this level. Because don't forget that what these people do is that they come to you, they try to run down the government to recruit more people, tell you that the government is not giving you water, the government is not giving you road, you don't have job, you don't have anything, join us, we will give you money, you start to be better off, and above all, you will go to heaven at the end of the day. Then you run to somebody who is trying to attend to all these little, little things. Okay. I think to me, that is one of the major reasons. Okay. There may be other reasons, yes, to me. There may okay. be other reasons. But I think that his performance so far is one of the things that uh, the set is not really too excited okay. about. And they feel that it is imperative okay. to silence him. Let, that's, let, that's one of the things I see okay. on him. Noted, noted. Uh, uh, Adamu, let's, let's also look at um, <laughs> our worry is the ordinary man. We cannot imagine how many lives that have been wasted in the past that are probably even underreported from this whole episode. We're talking about a strong signal that these Boko Haram guys are very much present there. 
We're talking about so, what seems like a contradictory report that we, that we get every time, that they've degraded, they've decimated. What can you deduce from this, Adam? Um, in simple terms, the, anyone who says, uh, you know, the group has been degraded, uh, I think we'll just tell him, let him go there. Uh, you know, <laughs> even with uh, the kind of escort the governor went with and he's, he was still targeted. So um, I think it's a fallacy, and it's really, um, I would say, uh, unsympathetic of the circumstances in, in Borno State and the Lake Chad Basin area for someone to use the words like de degraded and all that when referring to the issue of Boko Haram. Yes, if you are in the center of big cities, all the local government, 27 of them, most of them anyway, um, if you are within their city center, you are safe. But the moment you step five kilometers to and beyond of any of the city centers, you are mm. vulnerable to attack, including the city center, Meduguri. Mm. Um, so uh, this is the situation. There are pockets of these insurgents that are lying fallow in the you know, ungoverned spaces, forested areas, and waiting for innocent people. And they attack them almost on a daily basis. I mean, I monitor these developments Frequently, even today, a couple of um, like 30 minutes ago, I monitored um, an illegal checkpoint between Meduguri and Gaj Gaj Gajiram, um, a highway that is frequently traversed by you know, ordinary people who are looking for their livelihood. So frequently, this type of attacks are going on. And I think um, at the beginning of this, this discussion, I mentioned three areas where we know that there are active cells of this, these groups. And I cannot understand, I cannot fathom why 10 years into the warfare, the Nigerian, especially Air Force and um, Army, is yet to go and destroy those cells. Um, you cannot be fighting an, a war and your enemy has a camp and you know that that camp exists and you allow that camp to, 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 to exist. To One of the them. easiest ways to do is to destroy that camp. And by doing that, you, you've denied your enemy the ability to have a launching pad. But the reality is that those, those camps are still there, they are active, and the, the groups are using them to attack. Okay. I know there are challenges, because this area that I mentioned, like Lake Chad Basin is an island, so you need a very mobile amphibian force to go there and carry out the attack. In the Mandara Mountains is the mountainous area. You need a force that understands fight, fighting in such a dense mountainous area. And then, of course, Sambisa Forest okay. is, as the name suggests, it's a forested area. But for God's sake, we're talking of 10 years into an insurgency. By now, we should have been able to devise a means that would allow us to enter those camps and take them out. The okay. second point is intelligence. Um, okay. There is no way these groups would be acting the way they are if we have good intelligence. Imagine the attack on the governor. They, they were able to plant um, bombs, uh, you know, and then the other one is they were able to move donkeys. If we had enough intelligence capabilities, there would have been forewarning. And once you are forewarned, then you are forearmed. But That's clearly, true. our intelligence is, is okay. lacking us, as it were. And that is why the vulnerable Nigeria and the ordinary Nigeria continuously is being affected by Thank you so much. Uh, my time is really fast. But let me quickly get the final take from Tony Ofoyeto. Please, if you can help me in the next 45 seconds, what other solutions will you prefer that we need to do immediately? Well, I, I think in addition to what uh, Dr. Kabiru said, I agree with him in totality. Uh, in short, I'm not going to amend anything I said. Mm -hmm. I will just add the necessity for the political will on the part of the government to be ready to fight terrorism. Once the political will is there, every other solution will fall in place. So it is not left for the government to ask and answer the question whether they are truly ready to fight terrorism in Nigeria. Once the day they are truly ready, that will be the end of terrorism in Nigeria. Wow. Very, very strong and very, very direct. I know he's talking from experience and years of experience. Thank you, Tony Ofoyeto, definitely a security consultant. And thank you, Dr. Kabiru for Adamu for your insight. I quite appreciate, we quite appreciate your insight. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you for having us. Stay safe. Okay. I will take a break now. And when we come back, Executive Order 10 faces Supreme Court test. That is up for discussion. Please don't go anywhere.